Aloha everyone. My last Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater Lake update was on September 4th, 2019 and featured video and photos of the flyover I took on August 31st. In that video, I discussed my change of opinion on the source of the water based on my first person observations. This led to a discussion with a person who seems to be very knowledgeable about the subject. Ultimately, this encouraged me to revisit my change of opinion and do some image analysis of the photos I took on that flyover. I will be discussing that at the end of this video, but first, let's see what has been happening on the Mauna since then. To start this report, I am going to go back to September 5th, 2019, where we left off in my last update. Now, day-to-day -day changes are extremely challenging to measure, but not impossible. With the right high-resolution camera, lenses, and identical settings, a photo from the same spot at the same time of day, every day, can yield a ton of measurable data. Unfortunately, I do not have access to real-time data streams such as that so I must depend on the only data available to me. Now on the 5th, the USGS released this photo comparison of the growing lake. The left image is from September 2nd, and the right image is from September 5th. If we visually compare these images, it is evident the surface has expanded its borders and the depth has increased. We can see this evidence by identifying select features in the September 2nd photo and comparing them in the September 5th photo. For example, if we look at these two rocks, we see their tops are above water. Now if we study the right side photo, we can see they have submerged beneath the surface in merely three days. Looking around the borders of the lake, we see the same visual evidence confirming the lake is growing in size. The USGS posted on September 9th a video featuring two other videos. The first part is from the 6th, and the second part is from the 9th. In the video, you can see the agitation on the surface is little ripples. I stated in my last update, these were most likely due to the wind currents at play in the crater. It now seems the USGS might agree with me. Quoting from their caption, ripples are evident on the pond, presumably due to wind moving over the water surface. Before I move on, one correction is needed. USGS states the first part of the video is from September 6, 2019. However, that is in error. The first part is actually from August 31, 2019. Evidence of this error is presented in this side-by-side -side video comparison. The video in the top right corner, according to USGS, is from August 31st and was posted on September 1st. The video in the bottom left corner is the one posted on September 9th and labeled incorrectly as September 6th. Moving on, in this next photo comparison, we see the left image is dated September 6th and the right image is from September 9th. The USGS has provided an arrow pointer to the same rock in both photos for comparison. On September 10th, with the cooperation of the wind and some changes to the camera settings, USGS was able to present a photo that distinctly exposes the color variation in the eastern side of the forming lake. The image from the 10th is then submitted again in comparison to a new photograph taken on September 14th. An arrow pointer has been added to mark a rock which acts as the indicator of the rising water level over the four-day observation period. I want to take a moment to remind you, to receive notifications of new updates, you must subscribe to the channel. Then click the bell icon and select all notifications. If you appreciate this content, please consider clicking the thumbs up button to let me know. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages. Links for those are in the description below as well. Now back to the report. Jumping ahead to September 17th, the USGS releases two pieces of media. The first is this video shown at 30x speed and highlights the rapidly changing direction of the steam, proving there is a dynamic air current at the bottom of the Halemaumau crater, which also happens to be strong enough to make the steam move horizontally across the surface. 
We can also see at the top right side what appears as circulation and mixing of the water. The second piece of media is a new thermal image of the crater lake. It reports that the temperature of the water seems to be remaining pretty consistent, which is around 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. Summing up the 17th, observations continue to show the level of water is still slowly rising. The video posted by the USGS on September 20th is exciting. It seems to confirm my original assessment that certain areas along the borders of the water body are indeed locations of the influx of water. In this time-lapse video, we can see circulation currents created by multiple areas of water entering the pond. Please note, the clip shows the video twice. I am now going to show you the same video clip again. However, this time, I have slowed it down by 50% of its initial speed and I have applied some false color processing to make things more clear. September 22nd, the USGS released another time-lapse video covering about 30 minutes of activity. This video shows that the water seems to flow into the new lake from multiple locations around the edges. Again, please note, this clip shows the video twice. I will now also show you the same clip slowed down by 50% with the false color processing applied. Moving forward, on September 24th, the HBO field engineers and other staff proceeded to conduct the quarterly work at the Keller Well. It is a deep borehole at the summit of Kilauea which reaches the local water table. The top of the water table measured at a depth of 1,657 feet or 505 meters below the ground surface. Water samples are being taken to measure the chemical composition and track changes in that composition over time. Wrapping up the Halemaumau Crater Lake Report, we move to September 25th. Using the laser rangefinder, USGS has determined the approximate size of the lake. Measurements are 360 feet or 110 meters long and around 164 feet or 50 meters wide and 33 feet or 10 meters deep. With some simple math, we can calculate a water surface area of roughly 59,040 square feet, which is equivalent to 1.35 acres of surface area. You could say it is now the size of a U.S. football field, including the end zones. Now I would like to hear from you. How much bigger do you think this crater lake will grow? And what would it mean for the future of the volcano if it does? Let me know in the comments below. In part two of this report, I am going to discuss my reassessment of the source of water filling the crater, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. When the new lake was forming, I agreed with the USGS that the primary source of water was coming from the local groundwater table, and rain runoff was a minor contributor, if any at all. On August 31st, I flew over the crater and was able to conduct my own personal visual and photographic observations. Once I returned home and analyzed the photographic and video evidence, I changed my opinion and stated that I believe rain runoff was more of a contributor, but not the only contributor compared to what the USGS thought. It was that video in which I discussed this that triggered the conversation between the person I mentioned in the beginning and me. This conversation encouraged me to revisit my assessment, and I did. However, even after doing that, I still have to say, 
It is my opinion that surface water runoff is a significant contributor to the accumulating water in the crater, though it is not the only source, the other being groundwater seepage. Here is why I have formed this opinion. During my flyover on August 31st, I took this photograph. On review, I quickly noticed the color variations of the water. Some areas were a darker blue-green as compared to other areas being a brighter yellow-green. I then had just one question. Why? What is making the difference in these areas of the water? To help answer this question, I applied a false color spectrum enhancement to the image. Immediately, multiple features got my attention. The first is the locations that appear to be where the water is entering the lake. These yellow arrows indicate the areas I believe are the entry points. Secondly, the variation of the water color seems to signify different concentrations of what I think is mainly sulfur. The darker blue areas are locations where the water is entering with very little sulfur pre-dissolved. The brighter blue areas are where water heavy with sulfur is joining the lake. The next feature that got my attention is this fluorescent green stripe that is traveling from the edge of the water upwards towards the rim of the crater. I now wanted to know where that stripe of green progressed, so I grabbed this image and applied the same false color spectrum enhancement. So where does it go? It travels straight up to one of the steaming sulfur fumaroles. That most likely means the stripe is from sulfur being washed down the crater side by some form of water. Could groundwater cause this instead of surface water? I don't believe so. Groundwater would have to exit the top of the rim, then flow down the inside of the crater's surface. Interestingly enough, we see on the right side of the crater the same visual pattern without the sulfur-stained surface. That also happens to be the side of the lake that seems to have fresher water, or less sulfur, added water entering the water body. Looking at all this, what tells me the surface rainwater is significantly at play here is the sulfur. One side has water with large amounts of dissolved sulfur, while the opposite side of the lake does not. Add the visual evidence of rain traveling down the crater surface, illustrated by the sulfur-stained stripe to the water, I believe it would be safe to say that rain or some form of surface water is definitely at work here. Though, that is not to say it is the only force at work. Groundwater should be entering the system as well, just based on the fact of its elevated nature above the bottom of the crater. Well, that'll do it for this Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater Lake Report. Mahalo for watching, and I hope you found it both informative as well as entertaining. Until next time, have an incredible morning, afternoon, or evening.